you are listening to Grim and Stone, the Mountain Perspective. This podcast may contain objectionable language. Welcome to Grim and Stone, the Mountain Perspective. This is our take on what's happening in the world. How you doing, Stoney? I'm doing pretty good for Monday. How are you? I'm doing all right. Have a good weekend? Yeah, I did. It was uh, pretty nice here and spent most of it outside. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I did too. Well, some of it outside and hurt myself. Decided I was feeling better after the plague and decided I was going to go out and do some work. And now my arms don't want to work. So. Hey, well, you should know better. Anytime that phrase, I feel pretty good. Yes, that phrase, I feel pretty good. Let's do something <laughs> bad for one or both of us. Yes, yes. <laughs> good Lord. Well, today is my father's birthday. He is 70 years old today. Yay! Yeah. Happy birthday, Dad. Yeah, he doesn't look a day over 69. He's doing <laughs> all right. And uh, so glad he doesn't listen to this. Mm. So, but, uh, yeah, happy birthday, Pop. All right, let's get into this here. You Do you remember Valerie Harper? Valerie Harper. The name sounds familiar, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Rhoda? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Rhoda from the Mary Tyler Moore Show and the Rhoda Show. Yep. Well, apparently she is 73 years old and has recently been diagnosed with, and I'm not attempting to say what this is, but it's a cancer that strikes the membrane surrounding the brain. Mm. Wow. And uh, it's, it's incurable. Yeah, she's got it's a terminal diagnosis. Yeah. That's too bad. That is too bad. But the quote, this is the great quote from her. I'm not dying until I do. <coughs> there you go. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> that, that pretty much sums it up. Yes. I mean, you know, but she she seems to be in pretty good spirits, I mean, considering everything. Um but that's a shame. I mean, she, I mean, yeah, I grew up watching those shows, used to have a crush on her way back when. And, uh, but yeah, you know, we're going to lose another one here. Yeah, that's uh, too bad. Yeah, they didn't, they don't say how long, because it's, it's very rare, this, this type of cancer. And, uh, but she's been married to, uh, where's he at? Uh, she's been married to her husband, let's see, 34 years. Wow. And uh, so good for her, you know, on the marriage, but, you know, it's too bad that she's going to be going out this way. Yeah. But, uh, and at 73, she don't look terrible. You know, there, there are women who are half her age don't look half as good. Hmm. But, uh, Yep, so, gonna miss you, Valerie, when the time comes. When she, when she dies. When she dies. But she's not doing it until she does. Yes. So, you know, you can, yeah, that's, that's a very, <laughs> that, 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 that's an awesome way to look at it. I'm not dying until I do. So good for her, it you is, know. Yes. You know, good <laughs> Good on her for having somewhat of a positive outlook on this. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is this one comes from Arizona. Um. Apparently, it, it, I'm trying to figure out when the hell this was. A couple years ago, I'm guessing. Oh yeah, back in 2005. Here we go. A police officer pulled over this truck, I guess a semi, and something wasn't right, so he opens it up, and there was a metric shit ton, uh, 32 alligators in the back of this truck. Alive? And, yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Close it, close it, close it. Yeah, no no shit. <laughs> and, well, one of these alligators was missing a tail. So 
you know, what they've done is the they basically they rescued all these alligators and then they've been farming them out to, you know, zoos and uh sanctuaries and whatnot. And well, there's Mr. Stubbs, who's this this uh little alligator who uh without his tail, he's only twenty inches long. And well nobody wanted him. Well, because he's minus a tail. You know. He he's he's the fat kid at the dodgeball game, you know. Nobody wanted him. And uh so what they've done, now this is uh, in Phoenix, they've built a prosthetic tail for Mr. Stubbs so that he can learn how to swim again and be like a, a regular alligator. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, and what was funny was, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, really? You did what? And... They they had to x-ray the tail and saw that the vertebrae just was crushed and where it just kind of stopped. It came to an abrupt end. You know, and they x-rayed it to verify or to determine that his tail was bitten off. Well, no shit, his tail was bitten off. <laughs> Dumbasses. You know, they're spending all this money on this fucking alligator, you know. And it's like... It, any nipplehead could have looked at that and went, oh, his tail got bit off. Well, that, that's messed up. You know. <sighs> yeah, exactly. Jeez. So, yeah, it's kind of a, uh, a weak news day today. Yeah. yeah when I'm talking about prosthetic alligator tails. <laughs> well, I got a few for you. Uh, All right. Well, too, yeah, I got them too, Spectacular. Yeah, when you're done, I got I got two more. So, all right. Well, go ahead. Here's one from uh, Ohio. Mm. Okay. Uh, David Ayers of Cleveland went to prison 13 years ago for murder. All right. Uh, I think I remember that. A federal jury has found that the Cleveland police detectives in the case violated his civil rights by coercing and falsifying testimony and withholding evidence that pointed to his innocence. He's uh, spent 13 years in prison. He was released in 2011 when the, the uh, U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals reversed his conviction. But since then, there's been a lawsuit over this, and he has been awarded $13.2 million for pain and suffering. So, uh, mm. apparently, DNA proved that it was not him. Ah, well, okay. So, here we are, you know, 13 plus two years. So, 15 years later, after he's gotten out of prison, he's got his 13 point. Two million dollars, and the detectives were shown to have really screwed this up. Well, what happened to the guy that committed the murder? That's my question. Yeah, <laughs> they had DNA evidence that it wasn't him. Okay, but they suppressed that. Well, because they had a likely suspect. They they had an easy suspect. Yeah, yeah. Instead of trying to find the mystery man. So to find exactly. the guy who actually did it. Yes, yes. So 15 years later, he's watching this, you know, on whatever news channel. Dude won his, all this money, and he's thinking to himself, well, geez, all I did was get away with murder. Yeah. Well, I guess. I don't know. So. Well, at least the innocent guy got put set free. Yes, and he did. And, and apparently very well compensated for it. Yeah, a million dollars a year, apparently. And then uh, here's one that you and I can appreciate the uh, the loss. Okay. Gregory Rodriguez. Now, we don't have... That name sounds very, very familiar. Yeah, we don't have TV and we don't get magazines and whatnot, but uh, we are very familiar with... Uh, sportsman's activities and uh, on t 
cable TV. There's the Sportsman's Channel. Gregory Rodriguez is uh, one of the hosts or the host of the Sportsman's Channel, and he writes for the Rifleman magazine, if I remember right. Um, very, very respected uh, outdoorsman in the media. Okay. All right. Anyway, up in uh, Whitefish, Montana. Okay. Apparently, apparently Gregory was meeting with a gal up there. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> the husband busted into the house, slapped the wife around, and shot Mr. Rodriguez. See, that's not how it's done. <laughs> that's not how it's done. Okay. No, no. You no, Tell you, us how it's done. You come home and find your old lady in bed with somebody else. You chuck his ass out. Okay, you you. I mean, now, now unless it's your buddy. I mean, if you don't know personally know the guy, you just maybe whoop on him a bit, but chuck his ass out, and then you shoot the old lady. Dude had it completely backwards. Because because well, a dude, look, a woman comes up to me and says, "Hey, you want some?" I'm gonna be like, "Okay," and I'm gonna go get some. I, if I don't know her, I don't know her husband. I don't know that she's married. I'm just there to have, you know, a good time. That's not my fault. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't have to, I should not be expected to do a background check on every single woman. That, that addresses one possibility. However, in one of the articles that I, I read when it was, when it first happened, there was no indication that there was anything going on between the two. They met at uh, the woman's mother's house. And apparently the woman worked for a firearm manufacturer up in Flathead. Okay. Uh, the two had met at a trade show and uh, discussed. I mean, he, got, he writes for Rifleman. Mm -hmm. So they're going to talk guns. They discussed business. He was in uh, the area of uh, Whitefish, so they arranged to visit. She was at her mom's house with her son, and he stopped by to visit. And uh, her husband, Wayne Bankston, showed up at uh, mother-in-law's house, busted in, slapped the wife around, shot him. Uh, took the two-year-old son to a relative's house down in West Glacier, and then he shot himself. The kid's fine. Well, but but physically, it, yeah, physically. <clears throat> but the thing the thing is, there was no indication of anything going on, and oh. there was perfectly legitimate uh, connection between Rodriguez and the woman for them to be sitting down visiting. Oh, that sounds like tiny penis syndrome, then. Well, uh, so, you know, there's a, there's a big loss right there and it happened in Montana, which sucks, but, That's uh, a shame. we don't have too many shootings out here, actually. No, we don't. And we uh, have, I mean, for being such a gun friendly state for damn near every citizen, damn near, I would say, you know, a vast majority of our, our of Montana citizenry is, is armed. Yeah. We have surprisingly low number of shootings. Yeah. But uh, I bet if you know, do a background check on this guy, they're going to find some find some shit. Oh, okay. they might. I wonder they how many might. times he's beaten his wife and been arrested for domestics and shit. Well, that's probably why she was at her mom's house. But uh, yeah, just you know, here's this guy. He's, he's the host of a show on the Sportsman Channel. He writes for for uh, Rifleman Magazine. It's his business to know, uh, among other things, firearms. He's meeting with a gal who works for a local firearms outfit. And just, you know, oh, I'm in the area, and I remember you from the show. And So this this, this was actually a legitimate, legitimate meeting and not some rendezvous. Well, 
What the police are saying is there's no indication that there was anything romantic. Yeah, that's, 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 that, that husband was just, there was something. There was some, there's more to the husband. Well, there was. Well, there was. I mean, but you just don't <laughs> go in and beat the wife up and then shoot a dude and then yep. just cause. There, there's some serious, there's some serious shit in his background. I know there is. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the gun, the anti gun assholes will get a hold of that and blow it all out of proportion. But, uh, Let's see. I just thought, I just in thought Montana, kind of a... 2013, we've had what? One killing so far. So, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, it was someone it was else. Interesting. That's a shame. That's a shame. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, a loss for the, the sporting, the outdoor sporting community. Uh, community. But sticking with guns, let's go to, uh, North Carolina. And, uh, here's a guy. He learned his lesson. Okay. Oh, that just sounds but, like right out the, out the gate. Yeah, yeah. But uh, apparently learning his lesson, uh, coming to Jeebus or whatever it was that happened to him, uh, wasn't enough. He broke in to a home in North Carolina, uh, belonging to Sue Johnson. Well, the problem is, Okay, Sue Johnson, she's a retired widow. Mm-hmm. Wait, a retired widow? She was a professional she was, widow? She was professional and she retired, <laughs> yes. And, uh, <laughs> uh, a retired but, woman who's a widow. <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm quoting the story here. Well, it was written poorly then. <laughs> from Fox News. Wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm disappointed. In that. <laughs> so, guy breaks in, steals a shotgun, a cell phone, some medication, and uh, down the road he goes. Well, so, so nobody gets hurt? Nobody gets hurt. Okay. He has a, a uh, an enlightening, you know, uh, he, he came, like I said, he came to Jeebus. He goes back to the lady's house to apologize. And, re- she, and return the stuff? Well, it doesn't say whether or not he brought anything back. <laughs> <laughs> but he went back to her house to apologize. And uh, this old lady pulls a gun out of her pocket and said, Get on the floor. <laughs> you so-and-so. And she called the cops and held him... Uh, Held him there at gunpoint until they showed up. And, uh, <laughs> you know, she, she, it, she's the epitome of that, uh, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Yeah. She wasn't going to be fooled twice. He came back. Now, this, this time I take it he knocked on the door like uh, a, like a reasonable person. And uh, apparently, and, uh, when she found out what he was there for, she pulled her, her gun out and held him until the sheriff could show up. No? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he, so, yeah. No, no good deed goes unpunished, I guess. That's, uh, well, well, I mean, he, 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 he did rob her and yeah, you know, we don't know what kind of damage he caused in, in the place. Plus the, the fear factor alone. You know, because I I've been robbed before. I I had an apartment that was broken into, and it just it messes with you big time. Oh yeah, yeah. It's think, not like we're yeah. not big enough, but yeah. I mean, you feel you feel violated, and mm-hmm. and uh, I mean, there's there's definite fear there, and yeah, uh, yeah that was <laughs> that was dumb. That was really dumb. Yeah. Well, the good the the. Interesting twist. There's an interesting twist on the story. The sheriff that showed up. Apparently, this is a rural, rural area of North Carolina. Okay. Um, the sheriff that shows up, he knows Sue Johnson, the old lady. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said he was he was relieved. He arrived and arrested the bad guy. Okay. Relieved that Johnson, the woman, wasn't harmed. But 
what's interesting is that Sheriff Keith Levin knew Johnson because he recently taught a gun course at her church. Nice. <laughs> what's that? What's that old saying? Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. Yeah. Good. Good. <laughs> good for them. Well, you know it. That, I mean, now granted, you know, yeah. luckily no one was hurt in this, and luckily the old old woman wasn't hurt. But uh, I mean, hypothetically, if this guy was coming back for round two, you know, I mean, she was prepared this time. Yeah, well, you know, you don't know what he's coming back for, right? You know? But uh... <laughs> good lord! And no, the last, you do something stupid like that, you just you you and you feel bad about it. That, that's where you just like return everything on the doorstep and hightail your ass out of there with a note going, "I'm sorry." You just leave sorry. a note, and you just you know, if you have a change of heart, that that's that's good. Have your change of heart, but. You don't have to do a face to face. Yeah, you don't. You don't screw. <laughs> you don't screw around with retired professional widows that <laughs> learn their gun skills at church. Yes, I mean she's a professional <laughs> widow, which means how many husbands has she killed? So. Exactly. <laughs> oh. Okay. Last one for me. I know you've heard about uh, the. Uh, State of Michigan is is once again considering taking over uh, management of the city of Detroit for fiscal issues. Yes, uh, they've they've gone through this before and made a deal with the city that uh, the city would manage itself. Blah blah blah. And well, they've been looking at it again. And to follow up on that, former mayor uh, Kwame Kilpatrick. Okay. Uh, just went through federal court and was convicted on corruption charges. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, take, uh, how, how did the how did the city go bankrupt? Yeah, taking bribes and uh, rigging contracts for friends and friends of friends, and uh, just. It, it, it's a big mess. The IRS was involved in the case and everything. And uh, gee, I wonder why the the state of Michigan needs to take over management of Detroit. Good <laughs> lord! What a friggin' mess. Uh, oh, here in in foreign news, we're gonna go to New York for our foreign right. news. Um. You've heard of Mayor Bloomberg. Oh, yes. Yes. And uh, I believe it's starting tomorrow is the ban on uh, any, like, cola or, you know, sugary drink over 16 ounces sold at uh, fast food joints, theaters, whatever. Because, you know... They don't have more important things to worry about in New York. Right. You know, it's like, are you kidding me? They're actually, this is actually going to go through. Now, now you can still go to your, your grocery store and buy your two liter of Coke there. But when you go to, uh, you know, Taco Bell and you want to get a, you know, a big gulp or something, no, you're not going to get that because it's, you know, you can only get a 16 ounce drink. How stupid is that shit? I, I, I'm <laughs> trying to wrap my head around. Or, I mean, you know, I, they're not healthy. They're they're bad for you in in many ways. But to to ban them? Yeah, they're 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 banning them. Uh, it the, this is the nanny state, in effect. I mean, well, look at New York. They have. You know, extremely restrictive gun laws. Yeah. Because they know better. Uh, they've done the, uh, was it this, was it saturated or non saturated? You're not allowed to cook in some type of, of oil anymore because it's unhealthy. Right. Um, the salt content 
has to be below such and such, and now a ban on larger than 16 ounce sugary drinks. Great, it's yeah. the it's the nanny state. Apparently so. Uh, you know, I mean, I I don't. It doesn't make sense to me. I mean, don't they have bigger concerns in a place like New York? You would think. You know, you would think. I mean, that's that's where the Occupy movement was centered. Was they got Wall Street there? You know, the the. Uh, uh, what do you call that place? Uh, the United Nations is there. That's where 9-11 took place. You, don't you have something bigger to worry about than the size of my drink? Yeah. You know, <laughs> is, is this a, is this an indication from Bloomberg? I mean, there's a, he's got an issue with sugar content and size. Is he, is he trying to come out of the closet? I don't what? know. I don't get it. I don't know, it, it's it, it, it's the whole uh, we know better than you, and you know if, if you won't take care of yourself, we will force you, yeah, to take care of yourself. And this is why this is why rich people should not be allowed in politics. I I, I agree. Um, more foreign news, real quick. Uh, and this is all I have to say on this one. Justin Bieber cancels two shows in Portugal because he's a punk bitch. <laughs> so that says it all. That says it all. Okay. Oh, in uh, for sports. Now this one, this one's, this one's actually kind of messed up. Um, I love the headline. Steve, Steve Stricker ruins PGA Tour for everyone except Tiger Woods. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <clears throat> I guess the on the. This past Wednesday or whatever, they were uh, Steve Stricker and Tiger were out and they were practicing for uh, for this latest uh, PGA tournament. And uh, Tiger was having some problems with his putting. And Steve looks over and says, well, "Hey, you know, Tiger, maybe if you just do this with your stance, maybe it'll help." You know. Well. Guess who won? Tiger. Yes. Guess who came in second? Steve. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> had, had Steve Stricker kept his mouth shut, he could have won. <laughs> uh, oh, that's just, you know, again, no good deed goes unpunished. So, and uh, for weather... We're going to go to Palmetto, Florida, where mom and dad live. And that's where, you know, they, they see, like I said, dad's birthday's today. Mom's birthday was last Thursday. But it is uh, 73 degrees Fahrenheit. Wind is 17 miles an hour south by southeast. Humidity is 58%. That's not bad there at all. Because normally they're a lot higher. And the dew point is 57 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> but uh oh we did not cover uh the walking dead but there really wasn't a lot to talk about on the walking dead no there there should have been several murders in the show but uh it, it was pretty straightforward and not a lot happening not a lot happening they did add an interesting dynamic though by allowing some key members of opposing factions to actually meet and interact on a human level and realized, Hey, these guys are okay. Yeah. yeah. So I, but I, th I just, I have a feeling that because they had those interactions, it's going, that is going to play a huge part in what comes up next. Yeah. Well, it's, it's more build up, just like last week. It's build up. Well, I did get to see a little bit of a, of a preview for next week. Oh, no and, spoilers. Don't well, spoil it. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but, you know, but I'd already made up my mind that uh, because of those interactions between the, the opposing factions, uh, it's going to play a key part in, in what comes up next. Okay. So well, that's that's my prediction. I, I don't know. It was... Uh... 
Well, like I said, from last week's show and, and last night's show, there's, it's definitely build up. Something major is is coming. I, I I got a feeling they they can't do too many of these build up shows, which I think they learned with the Sophia thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't drag out. Where's the little girl? For six weeks, right. Um, so hopefully we've had our two build ups, and then we're going to have our breakthrough this this next week. So, because I I don't know that we can, because it it drags the story down. Yeah, you can't you can't drag those out too much, especially in a show that that is drama slash action. Right. You know, it's it's a show about survival, but they can't spend too much time on the human factor. Right. I mean, it's it. it I mean, part of part the main part of the story is the drama that does take place between characters and whatever. However, I want it to be faster drama, yes, or action yes. drama. <laughs> so <clears throat> I don't know. So we we'll shall see, see but uh, yeah, I, I, I'm predicting that uh, those interactions will play a key part in how shit turns out in the grand scheme. That's because, it. like, Milton and, uh, oh God, I forgot his name. The old dude. Oh, uh, shit. Yeah, the old dude. Fuck. His name's gone. Like- the legless doctor. Yes. Uh, those two hit it off. Yeah. They were good. Yeah. And then uh, Daryl and I can't think of it. Martinez, I think, I believe is, is the character's name is. I could be wrong. I could be so. Rodriguez. It, it's one of those. Those two started off rough, but they bonded there at the end. Yeah. They, 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 they came to understand each other and realize, hey, we're... We are on the same side. So, you know, I hopefully, like I said, I I just, but I predict that those, those interactions will play a key part. And I, I, I think what's going to happen is, is the, uh, I mean, we all know that the governor is planning a, a betrayal and an ambush. So, I think Milton and that other dude are going to hopefully kibosh that shit. We'll find out. Yep. The only the only part of the show that really got to me, being the cranky old vet that I am, is uh, Glenn and Maggie left their post to get a little nooky. Oh, like you you've bet, never done that. You, you, you up, <laughs> n- n- not when I'm on post no no <laughs> he's on guard duty she comes in to take over her shift and they sneak off who's watching who's watching the zombies yeah they should you know a little eh, a bit irresponsible you know uh, court martial is in order yeah, yeah. <laughs> shoot them both in the leg throw them over the fence there you go all righty, I think that about does it for today. Yep. So, uh, all right, again, happy birthday, Pop, and uh, good luck, Valerie Harper. So, all right, buddy, I will talk to you soon, and we will talk to the rest of you uh, Thursday. Thursday. Hopefully we'll have some news by then. it would be nice. This was, good news, maybe. Yeah, this was just, you know, <laughs> alligator prosthetic tails. It's just, you know, like, nothing there so (laughs) all right have a good week and we will talk to you soon you too brother peace